Hey everybody, I'm Justin with ExcelSmith, where our goal is to build better Excel users. On this episode of Solutions, we look at generating random group assignments and versions of Excel prior to Excel 365. There are times when we need to randomly place our data into groups. For example, assigning a list of participants to different test groups. This video contains two solutions for this scenario. Across both solutions, we will be using these formulas. Links to the Microsoft support pages for these formulas are in the description below. As a callout, the solutions in this video were designed for versions of Excel other than Excel 365. They will work in Excel 365, but Excel 365 contains new functions that allow for a simpler solution. Let's jump in. Our first example contains a list of names in column C and a list of unique random numbers in column A. To see how to create the list of random numbers, click the YouTube card or the link in the description. Lastly, I've included a helper cell, F1, that will allow us to easily change the number of individuals assigned to each group. Column B will hold a randomly assigned group for each of our participants. Since we have 12 participants and we want groups of three, the value in cell F1, we will end up with a total of four groups. To randomly assign these individuals to one of those four groups, we divide the random number in column A by the number of individuals per group, or cell F1. We then set this division as the first parameter in a round up function. The second parameter of round up will be set to zero as we want to return only whole numbers. Let's break down what's happening to understand why we use the round up function. If our ranking is one and we divide it by three, we end up with 0.333. We could use int instead of round up and then add one to get our desired value of one. This holds for a rank of two as two divided by three is 0.667. Again, int with adding one would return the desired result. However, this logic breaks when the rank is three as three divided by three is one. If we use the same int plus one approach, our equation would return two as opposed to the desired value of one. Additionally, simply using round instead of round up would solve the problem for ranks two and three, but would return zero for a rank of one. By using round up, we ensure that no matter the fraction, the value will always be rounded up to the next whole number. For values who divide evenly, like three or six in our example, these would stay on their results as there is no fraction. As we drag down the formula in column B, you might have noticed the values in column A updated. This happens because the values in column A are being generated by a formula containing rand between. Rand between updates every time the worksheet is recalculated. This means that our ranking will also be modified every time the worksheet recalculates. To prevent this, we can lock the results of the group column by copying and pasting their values on top of the formulas. Let's do that now. After selecting the values in column B, press Ctrl C on a PC or Command C on a Mac to copy the values. Next, we need to paste the values in the same spot by selecting Paste Values from the Paste dropdown. This replaces the group equation with the values they generated. Since the group equations have been converted to their values, we no longer need the random numbers, which means we can delete column A. Alternatively, you could perform the same copy and paste value steps on the random numbers in column A. Doing this would convert the random number equations to their values. As a result, their group equations will no longer update when the worksheet is recalculated because they are now performing the comparisons against static data. This solution is definitely the most compact. However, it requires that you have a separate column containing a unique random number for each value in the dataset. It's possible to create an equation in a single column that performs the random grouping without the need for a separate random number column. For this, we will use an equation similar to our single column random number formula. Like the random number formula, this equation is built around the large function. The first parameter of the large function is our array of available options. For our example, there are four possible groups which is calculated by dividing the number of participants by the value in cell E1, the number of participants per group. To generate a list of numbers from one through four, we use the row formula. Next, we need a way to determine which groups have been filled. In other words, which groups are listed three times. We can accomplish this by using count if. The first parameter of count if is the range where our values could reside. In our case, that's column A. To avoid a circular reference, we will build our count if formula 
with an expanding range. To do this, we set the first piece of the range to A1, making sure to lock this reference. Next, we set the second piece of the range to an unlocked A1. By leaving the second piece of the range unlocked, it can expand as we drag down our equation. For example, in row 2 of our worksheet, the range would be A1 through A1. Dragging the formula down to row 3 would result in a range of A1 through A2. In other words, the range will always be equal to A1 through the row immediately above the given equation. The second parameter of count if is the value we want counted. Typically, this is a single value. However, in our case, we need to count all of the group numbers. To do this, we create another array using row with the range 1 through 4 as the parameter. Again, make sure to lock these values. This will cause count if to return an array with the number of instances each value, 1 through 4, has occurred in the range provided in the first parameter. Next, we need a way to determine if the results in our count if equation equal the number of participants listed in cell E1. We can accomplish this by using an if statement. We set the count if equation as the first parameter of the if statement. To complete the comparison, we check to see if the result of count if is equal to the value in cell E1, remembering to lock the reference. If the value in the count if function is equal to our value in E1, we want the equation to return 0. If the value does not equal E1, we want the if formula to return 1. The if function will perform this calculation for each value in the array returned by the count if function. We then multiply our first row statement by the if statement. This will result in an array of 1 through 4, which was created by the row function, being multiplied by an array of four values, each of which is either a 1 or a 0, as determined by the if statement. By multiplying these two arrays, our new array will have the numbers 1 through 4, wherever the if statement returned a 1, and a value of 0, where the if statement returned a 0. For example, if our data has already used three instances of group 2, the if statement would return a 0 at the second position, which would give the array 1, 0, 1, 1. Multiplying this by our array of 1, 2, 3, 4 would give us the final array of 1, 0, 3, 4. Lastly, we need a way to randomly generate the second parameter of the large function. This parameter determines which nth largest value to return from the array provided in the first parameter. For example, if the second parameter was a 1, large would return the largest value. If the parameter equal 2, large would return the second largest value in the array, and so on. This means that we need a formula that will always return a value between 1 and the number of unfilled groups remaining. In other words, before any group has been listed three times, the value in cell E1, we want the second parameter of large to be equal to a number from 1 to 4. If one of our groups has been used three times, we need this parameter to be equal to 1 through 3. To generate this random value, we can use rand between, which takes two parameters. The first parameter sets the lower bound of the range. In our case, we always want this equal to 1, so we can set 1 as a static value. The second parameter sets the upper bound, and is the value that needs to change once our groups are filled. We can determine which groups have been filled by using the same if statement we built earlier in the equation. We just need to wrap this if statement inside a sum function to return the number of groups that have been filled. Lastly, we subtract the results of our sum formula from 4, which is the number of possible groups. Once we've completed the ran between function, we can submit our equation. As this is an array formula, we need to submit the equation by pressing Control, Shift, and Enter. We can now drag down our equation to cover each participant. Like the previous example, we will need to copy and paste values to prevent the results from changing every time the worksheet is recalculated. As a callout, if we have a number of participants that isn't evenly divisible by the number of individuals per group, the equation will still work. You will just have groups that are not filled. For example, if we only have 10 participants and we still want no more than 3 people per group, this equation would return either 3 groups of 3 and 1 group of 1, or 2 groups of 3 and 2 groups of 2. Which outcome and which groups aren't filled will be random. The solution we built works great if you know the number of possible groups. In our example, that was 4, which was the 12 participants divided by 3, the number of participants per group. It's possible to modify this equation such that it will dynamically determine how many groups are needed. This could be useful if your spreadsheet will be used for multiple participant lists with different numbers of participants in each group. 
To help make the updates easier to see, we're going to place the parameters of the large function on their own lines by pressing Alt and Enter on a PC or Option and Enter on a Mac. The first step in making an equation that expands with the number of rows is to update the row formula. Instead of hard coding the lower and upper bounds for the possible options, we will use two index formulas to create a dynamic array. For a more in-depth look at creating dynamic arrays using two index formulas, click the YouTube card or the link in the description. The first parameter of the index formula is set equal to the column containing our participants, which is column B. The second parameter is hard-coded to 1 since we know we will always have at least one group. The first parameter of the second index function, like the first index formula, is set to column B. The second parameter is where we introduce the dynamic component. To make sure this parameter is equal to the number of desired groups, no matter how many rows or participants per group, we will utilize count A. The first step is to set count A equal to column B. This will return the number of participants plus the header row. Since we don't want to include the header row when generating our upper bound, we need to subtract 1. The next step is to divide this by the number of participants per group, which can be found in cell E1. We want to lock this reference so that it doesn't update as we drag our formula to other rows. Lastly, we need to ensure that the upper bound is a whole number. For this, we can use roundup. The first parameter of roundup will be the count A formula we just created. We set the second parameter to 0 to force the value in the first parameter to round up to the nearest whole number. Next, we need to modify the row function inside our if statement. We can simply replace the 1 through 4 with the index functions we created in the first row formula. Lastly, we need to update our ran between function. We will need to replace the hard-coded 4 with an equation to dynamically determine the number of groups needed. We will also need to update the row function inside the COUNTIF formula. This will be the same update that we've made to the previous two row functions. In the previous solution, this value was set to 4 because that was the number of groups we needed, 12 participants divided by 3 participants per group. What we need is a formulaic way to determine the number of needed groups. Fortunately, we already have that piece. The roundup function inside the second index formula does just that. All that's left is to press Control, Shift, and Enter to submit the array formula, and then copy this equation down to cover each row of our participant list. Just like the other solutions in this video, we will copy and paste values to make sure they don't change when the worksheet recalculates. We have created a few different equations that will generate a list of random groups. Which one you choose depends on your needs. If you choose one of the single column solutions, remember to submit the equation by pressing Control, Shift, and Enter. Additionally, for any of the solutions in this video, make sure to copy and paste values once the random groups have been generated to prevent your results from updating when the worksheet recalculates. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Also, leave a comment below if you have an example where you've needed to place your data into random groups. Thanks for watching.